But first tonight, China stepped up its attack on Australia this week, admitting its escalating aggression is in a large part because of our world-leading call for an inquiry into the origins of COVID-19. For months after Australia first called for this inquiry, we are no closer to an answer about how this virus started. And it's amazing how little interest there seems to be in the media to investigate this topic, with an almost complete rejection of the notion that the virus may have leaked from a Wuhan lab. Well, tonight I'm going to show you new documents that shed light on how this theory was dubbed a conspiracy and dismissed so early on. In February, when the gravity of the virus was only just being understood around the world, the esteemed medical journal The Lancet published a letter signed by 27 leading scientists saying that this virus was from animals. It then accused those questioning whether the virus was from a lab as spreading, and I quote, misinformation. The statement said, we are public health scientists who have closely followed the emergence of the 2019 novel coronavirus disease and are deeply concerned about its impact on global health and well-being. The rapid, open and transparent sharing of data on this outbreak is now being threatened by rumours and misinformation around its origins. We stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. Conspiracy theories do nothing but create fear, rumours and prejudice that jeopardise our global collaboration in the fight against the virus. We support the call from the Director General of WHO, the World Health Organisation, to promote scientific evidence and unity over misinformation and conjecture. Well, new email correspondence, 466 pages of it, has been released under FOI in the past week and it's been obtained by the US Right to Know Group. It has exposed that this letter in The Lancet was organised and authored by a group called the EcoHealth Alliance. It's a US non-profit group that has received millions of dollars from the US to do joint research, some of it genetically modifying coronaviruses, with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The very same type of research that is suspected of having inadvertently leaked to cause COVID-19. And the emails released under this FOI show that EcoHealth Alliance President Peter Daszak wrote the first draft of the Lancet statement. It's been reported by the US Right to Know Group that two of the other scientists who signed the letter, Rita Colwell and James Hughes, are both members of the board of directors of the EcoHealth Alliance, while William Karash is the group's executive vice president for health and policy, and Hume Field from the University of Queensland here in Australia is their science and policy advisor. But in the emails Peter Daszak wrote, please note that this statement will not have EcoHealth Alliance logo on it, and it will not be identifiable as coming from any one organisation or person. The idea is to have this as a community supporting our colleagues. Now, Dazik has not responded to my request for comment as yet, but on Twitter, he has responded to the story. He did so with an eye-rolling gif that says, here we go again, and a comment saying, sadly, it's only got worse. Weaponizing and funded politically, maybe time for another letter. Now, it's worth noting that in this letter, there was no evidence presented by the scientists at this early stage, February, to refute the possibility that the virus had originated in a lab. And one signatory, Linda Saith, actually asked via an email that's been released as part of this bundle, she asked on February 6 whether this should be added. She wrote, I concur with this draft. One question is whether it would be useful to add just one or two statements in support of why COVID is not a lab-generated virus and is naturally occurring, seems critical to scientifically refute such claims. Yes, it does. But Dazik replied, you're right, it would be good to be specific about the bioengineered virus conspiracy theory, but I think we should probably stick to a broad statement. Now, Dazik, in numerous media interviews, has also t said, and in including in interviews to The Guardian, that questions about a possible laboratory origin of this coronavirus are crackpot theories that need to be addressed. Now, this letter that appeared in The Lancet, the draft letter was first written, according to these emails, on February 6. Remember how early this was in the virus. In Australia, we had only brought in our world-leading travel ban from China just five days earlier. 
and it would be another two months before Donald Trump blamed Wuhan labs for leaking the virus. So at this point, it's worth asking, where was this allegation that it might be from a lab coming from? Well, there was one main source, a preprint by Chinese scientists that suggested it had leaked from a laboratory. And this preprint, this letter, was quickly withdrawn. Now, to repeat, EcoHealth Alliance, the group that first drafted the letter that appeared in The Lancet and organised it, has received millions of dollars in funding to genetically manipulate coronaviruses, sometimes working in conjunction with scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. For this, they have been accused since the release of these emails of a conflict of interest. The fact that the same body that organised this statement received funding to study coronaviruses in China is at the very least a perception of a conflict of interest. This is quite a significant story, a massive story. And seeing as this is the first time you're probably hearing about it, you already know what I'm about to say is true. The media has barely reported on this. Most outlets have not reported on it at all. Now, here's something else that's fascinating. Peter Daszak wanted seven other scientists to sign the letter for The Lancet in his first email correspondence. Here they are, as revealed in the emails. But two of these scientists, Lin Fu Wang and Ralph Barrick, did not end up signing the letter. The emails reveal that by 9 p.m., sorry, by 10 p.m. on February 6, their names were no longer on the list of signatories. We don't know why they didn't agree to sign the letter, what happened in those hours between when it was first drafted and when it later appeared in the publication. And I've contacted both of them for comment, but not heard back yet. But interestingly, Professor Barrick from North Carolina University has worked with the Wuhan Institute of Virology's so-called Batwoman, Shi Zheng Li, before. They did a study published in Nature Medicine in November 2015 into bat coronaviruses. And this study that they did together acknowledged that gain-of-function work they were doing could actually create more deadly viruses. The conclusion in their study spoke, spoke about this very risk. It said the potential to prepare for and mitigate future outbreaks must be weighed against the risk of creating more dangerous pathogens. In developing policies moving forward, it is important to consider the value of the data generated by these studies and whether these types of chimeric virus studies warrant further investigation versus the inherent risks involved. Quite extraordinary. Now, the early scientific studies published by medical journals like The Lancet and Nature and others are now also coming under scrutiny from serious world-leading scientists amid claims that the data that underpinned them was flawed. The very earliest data in COVID-19 that originated from the Wuhan Institute of Virology and formed the basis of these early papers that said the virus definitely had a natural origin, was naturally occurring, this data is now being questioned by scientists who say it deserves greater scrutiny. The data has been selectively shared and some data sets have gone missing. As the US Right to Know group notes in one of their articles, Chinese governmental authorities first promoted the idea that the source of the causal agent for COVID-19 in humans came from a wild animal in December. Chinese government supported scientists then backed that theory in four separate studies submitted to the journals between February 7 and 18. Now, in Australia, we exposed some problems with one of these early studies. Our story at the Daily Telegraph on May 11 revealed that China's People's Liberation Army had been involved in the scientific research into the origins of the coronavirus, which was then published in these esteemed journals. The study, which was at the time trumpeted by the University of Sydney as helping to solve the puzzle of how COVID transferred from animals to humans, it relied on a key laboratory in an institute in the PLA's Academy of, Medical, of Military Medical Sciences to conduct its genetic sequencing and virus isolation. This study was co-funded by the Australian Research Council, so Australian taxpayers, and the Chinese government. The director of microbiology, the director of the microbiology institute that did this work, the genetic sequencing and virus isolation, his name is Professor Wu, Can, Wu Chan Kao. He is thanked in the paper's acknowledgement for his, and I quote, substantial contribution. He has the rank of Colonel, 
and is a Wuhan Institute of Virology board member. As you can see, there are clear conflicts of interest here. Now, remember, all countries around the world have agreed an investigation is needed to determine the origin of this virus. In this investigation is already proving very difficult, very complicated. Intelligence agencies have also said for months now that an inadvertent lab leak is an active line of inquiry. Yet scientists, supposedly world-leading scientists, just weeks after we first learnt about the virus earlier this year, were so quickly ready to say that it was naturally occurring and that to suggest otherwise was misinformation. In fact, it was their claim that was misinformation. The real information, the truth, is that we still do not know how the virus started. It may have had a natural origin, it may be naturally occurring, or it may have leaked from a lab in Wuhan. It's why Australia led the world in calling for an inquiry into the origins of the virus. And it's why China is now coming after us, and they've admitted this just this week. It's absurd that a group of scientists just a month after the virus emerged publicly, called it misinformation to suggest it did not have a natural origin. And what's more absurd is that the majority of the media just swallowed this line without question, and that those who did question it were attacked by the left. The Guardian, the Herald, the ABC, Media Watch, they sided with the Chinese government in trying to shut down reporting of this question, just like the Chinese government has tried to shut down an inquiry into the origins.